um, uh, uh, I, we are at 203, so I want to, I don't want to um, step on people's time and keep uh, people waiting. Um, I did want to say one thing as a sort of other, uh, another housekeeping sort of thing. Um, something that's been uh, happening through the process of having these sessions is um, we've been generating these referrals uh, when there's a question beyond uh, my capability or and or the time frame that we're in together. Mm -hmm. um, several of you have had referrals put in. And I just wanted to touch base about that process. Um, talking to Marilyn Hahn, who is our volunteer coordinator. She's the person who processes those. She contacts our volunteers that do the tech um, assistance. So there's... Uh, there's a couple steps to it. And if you've never received someone that does the tech assistance um, from the agency into your home, you do have to sign um, two different waivers in regard to that. And she sort of would mail those out to anyone. And I think if you wanted to come and pick them up, that could also be an option, but she would mail them out. And um, it's the one is a permission to that you're allowing the individual to come into your home. And the second is an acknowledgement of your understanding that this person is a is a non professional. So, you know, they're offering their service uh, of tech assistance just in a sort of personal capacity. And it's sort of a, a release of liability in that regard. So I just wanted to be clear about that um, so that there's a just a, a clear understanding that it's not a sort of instantaneous um, turnaround. And also that um, I think our tech assistants are very good. Art can probably attest to that. He's one of them. <laughs> but, um, you know, you're not going to the Geek Squad or the Genius Bar. So just to keep that in mind. Um, all right, let's let's get to it. Welcome to everyone. I'm glad that you made it in today and um, looking forward to talking about uh, video chatting. Uh, our main exercise today that we're going to do is um, practicing on Zoom. So everyone will get a chance to accomplish um, a few different tasks and hopefully kind of flex that muscle and build some confidence. Um, for those who maybe uh, feel like they'd, they'd like a little more practice. Um, so we'll kind of do the same format as we've been doing. I'm going to go through the slide presentation and um, then we'll dive into the practice half. And if you feel that you don't need to spend time practicing Zoom, then by all means, carry on with your day. But obviously, anyone is welcome to stay too. Um, and then just one other note. Um, in the slide presentation, if anyone's looked at it already, there are several different videos that are YouTube tutorials on the different um, platforms that I'm outlining for uh, video chat. We're not going to watch those today. I, inc I included this in the email that I sent, but um, those I just I just tack those in if people at your leisure you decide that you'd like to look into it a little more and have some instruction about how to uh, um, access those, use those. I'm trying to make a better practice of looking into the camera. I look at my screen and then I'm like looking off to the side in the recording. I'm trying, here, I'm looking at the camera. All right, let's get to it. And as always, please just jump in. Once I share my um, screen, I can't see the the I can't see you guys anymore. So um, I uh, just just dive in because I can't see if your hand is raised. But week five video chat and first up Zoom as we're on now. Um, this has become through the quarantine a ubiquitous service that we've all everyone's heard of if they haven't haven't done it but um there's a couple elements i think that make it the successful platform especially for this particular time um it's free uh 
for a basic account, anyone can join for free and anyone can have a free basic account. Uh, but there are premium paid accounts that offer more features. So if you're um, hosting meetings or, or um, sessions, it could behoove you to look into a paid account, certainly at your discretion. Um, the meeting times for a free account do time out at 40 minutes. You can always sort of just log right back on again, but um, there is that sort of stipulation with the free account. You can host um, from a one-to-one -one meeting up to a group of 100. And if you have the premium account, then you can pay an additional fee to have an even larger gathering up to a thousand people. If you could imagine on a Zoom, <laughs> seems a little overwhelming. Um, uh, one of the things that I think has made it really successful is that people can join the Zoom by phone. So it's uh, made it accessible to everyone, regardless of whether or not they have a device and or an internet connection. Some people don't have that at home. Two things to sort of remember, um, plug in your device uh, if you're on a Zoom, because Zoom does tend to just suck your battery right down. And also, um, I would, uh, if, you, if, if you have an unlimited data plan, then uh, good for you. But if not, you want to make sure you're on Wi-Fi because that's going to rack up some data for you on the Zoom as well. And that's down here, the little icon for Zoom. So then there's a little video. In this tutorial, you're going to learn exactly how to use Zoom so I didn't realize that would just automatically play. I'll try to be quick on that. Another service, uh, hopefully this isn't one that it's blink and it's gone because Google tends to <laughs> start programs and then take them away. But um, Google Meet is a, another free video conferencing service. Uh, if you want to create a meeting through Google Meet, you will have to have a Google account, but that's free too. Um, and to join a meeting uh, from a mobile device, you will have to be signed into a Google account. Um, on a laptop or PC, there's a you can join from a browser window. Um, can have up to 100 people on a Google Meet. And um, for that's for 60 minutes for a personal account. If you have a business account, there are more features. Uh, same advice, plug in your device, make sure you're on Wi-Fi. I've included these icons. If you um, have an interest in this platform, this would sort of be the icon to look for when you go to the um, Google Play Store or um, the Apple Store um, to get that app. Hi everyone, my name is Kevin. Um, Facebook Messenger also has a video chat service um, and you to use the full features of it, you're gonna have to download the app. Uh, you can be one-on-one -on -one in a ses Facebook Messenger session or in group. Um, and there are these sort of messenger rooms uh, uh, that have the video chat feature, but they can also be broadcast on a Facebook Live. So just a word to the wise that there is a possibility that people who are not directly in that um, call may be able to see what's going on on the video, just FYI. Gonna get another video here. Oh, that one's not playing straight away. Video calls are. We talked about Skype in one of our earlier sessions. Um, this Skype was kind of the first uh, video chat platform that came out. Um, and uh, it has a nice feature that it has instant messaging in addition to the video chat. Um, it's free. Uh, uh, but if you access it with a uh, landline or a mobile phone over a telephone network, then you there is a fee for that. And I do believe that that is probably the reason why Skype uh, 
was not the preferred choice during our, our quarantine time here because it wasn't completely free. Sorry about all these automatic videos. Um, kind of moving into uh, more of the uh, phone phone apps, although you could certainly, if, if you have a microphone enabled uh, and a video, you'll, you'll be able to access this like on a laptop or a PC um, as well. Google Duo is um, more of a private uh, than service than Meet, although you can have uh, groups on as well as having one-to-one -one conversation. Um, to access it, both people will have to have the app. And um, something that's a kind of a cool feature about it is you can record video messages and then send to someone. Um, it has little filters and effects that can kind of be just sort of a fun way to play around with changing your background and stuff like that. Um, and it's a good way to do video chat if one person has uh, an Apple product and the other person has an Android product. Um, some of the, like you can only do FaceTime, right? If both people have, a, have an iPhone. So it's kind of cool that way it enables. And there are some other platforms that you'll see that have the same. So what I'm discovering is when I press the forward, for the next slide is when that the sound comes on. Um, I wonder if I do it down here, if the same thing will happen, we'll try for the next. Um, WhatsApp, we've talked about previously, but um, again, a, a way to have video chat, it's encrypted. So there's a little bit of extra security there. And you can also do um, international call, text, and video chat. Uh, you will have to have an internet connection to connect to WhatsApp. And again, this is a way to have the video chat if one person has the Apple product and the other person has Android. Let's see. Yeah, that still started it. Instagram also has a video chat feature. This is going to be one on one. Um, WhatsApp I, is also a, a one on one. Um, as to my knowledge, they, they're, those are one on one. I don't believe there's a group option. Um, it's just a, sort of a, a, just another way to kind of have a video uh, um, exchange with another person. It has the filters and effects just like Google Duo does. Um, and again, also can interface between Apple and Android products. FaceTime, as I mentioned earlier, this is the proprietary iPhone video chat. It only works between iPhones. It does have capacity to have group and one-on-one. -on -one. So um, you can talk to a few people. Again, here's the icon, but they'll all have to have iPhone to join that. Okay. So those are just some of the main platforms um, that you can let me come out of this, that you can use to have a video chat with someone else, be it one-on-one -on -one or in a group. Mm -hmm. um, today, we're gonna spend the majority of our time sort of practicing on Zoom because that was the one of the main things that people requested that they wanted to know more about and feel like that they were comfortable and confident um, in doing. But well, let me just say before we sort of dive into that, does anybody have a question or a comment on any of those other platforms? Yes, Rebecca. Please. This is Sharon. Hi. Uh, when you mentioned FaceTime, 
I go on FaceTime periodically with a group of friends from high school, uh -huh. uh, high school days. <laughs> um, and we uh, can talk, but they're all on iPhones. I don't, I'm not on an iPhone, I'm on my iPad. And they can reach me through my um, uh, password, not my password, my um, uh, the ID for um, the, what do I want to say? I don't know. <laughs> um, for um, the computer. Mm -hmm. For your, on your tablet or yeah. iPad. Or also OSIVAD at att.net. So they reach me on that and we can connect. You know what? I thank you for saying that because I, I misspoke when I, when I said just that it had to be iPhone to iPhone. So right. it's Apple product though to right. Apple product. Right. right. But thank you for pointing that out, that there is a to do it with the iPad too. Yeah, we had a real hard time setting that up and trying to get it all through because they could never get through to me. And finally we figured it out and it, it worked. So I'm probably be on there at three o'clock today. <laughs> did you have to like, did you have to get an app to make the connection? How was it that you went about setting up the connection? Well, my son kind of did it for us, so I really don't know. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, it's good to know that it can be done. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, if someone had um, a non-Apple tablet or phone, they would not be able to be in that FaceTime call. It has, it only works with Apple products. That's what they kept saying, which is why they thought I couldn't get on. But we finally figured it out. Good for you. I can share that with you, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> oh, thank you. Necessity is the mother of invention. Okay, your email address. Right. So um, there was a, a question that came up in the other group um, that meets on Thursdays, but I wanted to share the information because I thought it might uh, be relevant for some someone on the call at some point. I wanted to show you how you can um, permanently change the display name that you have on um, Zoom. And well, you know, permanent as until you change it again, if you want to, that there you can, we can go in through settings and change that. But the one that sort of like automatically pops up when you log on, um, when you're logged into a Zoom account. So I'm gonna, share my screen again and show that to you. And I'm, this is, I'm logged into my Zoom account. Um, and this is the sort of the lay of the land. Um, up here at the top on the right hand side, you have the option to schedule a meeting or join a meeting or host a meeting once you're signed in. And then over here on the left-hand side, you have this column that is uh, sort of your control panel for Zoom. So if I go into meetings, I don't currently have any set up, <laughs> um, but I could look at my previous ones and see here I had some, Da, da, da. The personal room, um, these are the details for my uh, personal Zoom room. That's my, my meeting ID number. And then my passcode isn't showing, obviously. Um, webinars, I haven't really used. Um, I can't speak to this because I don't know too much about it. Uh, Oh, look, I'm just seeing here and 10,000 attendees. I had a thousand. I guess that was off. Look, wow. Um, just like we're doing right now, you can record a, um, a Zoom session and then it's available under this recordings um, tab, if you will, on that side column. So I have two here from, uh, they expire after 30 days. 
says that up here, cloud recordings will be deleted automatically after they've been stored for 30 days. So these are just two that I recorded previously that are still in there. Um, settings, this has some uh, options for the weight room, um, requiring a passcode, um, all these things that you can choose to, to do or not do when you're setting up a meeting. Uh, account profile tells you like what kind of account you have. And then these reports, usage reports and user activity reports. I haven't really done anything with those, but perhaps if for an organization, you might use those a little more. But anyway, coming back to, I went into profile, the first one here on the top, and that brought up all of my basic information. It has my name, where my account is provided through. Um, I don't have a phone number added, but again, um, my meeting ID and um, my sign in email. But if I wanna change my name as displayed, I just come over here to edit. And then this is the name of the account, but here, right here, it says display name. And so I have that there. I could change my picture. This picture that's showing is what shows when you go off cam. Sometimes you'll see people just have a sort of blank screen with their name on it. That's the default setting if you don't have a picture. But then if you put a picture in here, then that's what will show up when you go off cam. So I always like my purple flowers. I want to keep everything just as it is right now, but if you wanted to change it, this would be profile and then edit in this name box. Any questions on that? Okay. So this part um, will be a little bit trickier in that I can't share uh, this screen, this base screen. Art, you had a question or something to say? You're on mute. Art, you're muted. Trying to be a good citizen here. Uh, that page that you showed us, I think they call that the dashboard page. Is that the that name? probably is what they call it. I, you know, I, I was able to put that on a tab in Google, but I'll be damned if I can remember how I did that. <laughs> I mean, it was just, and it controls all my Zoom meetings, obviously, every time I want to set up a new meeting, you know, I, I, I use that um, because it's a wonderful thing. But how did you just pull it up? Is it just part of Zoom? So I wanted to kind of show you from the beginning, but because I'm logged in for this Zoom, I couldn't be logged out <laughs> on another tab. I tried to do that and see if I could, but obviously I couldn't. So I went to zoom.us. Zoom.us. Okay. Yep. And that's where you log in. It's going to ask you for your... Um, email that you use to, to set the account up with. Okay. And um, then your password. And if you've forgotten that, I'm sure there's one of those like forgot your password and it sends it to the email thing. So, so if you go to zoom.us, even though you already have a Zoom account, you can see this, this page and actually save a link to it because yes. that, that's that's that I did that but I you know I I don't know how I did it. it was an accident more than anything else I've done things like that myself <laughs> and then I celebrate of course <laughs> my brilliant how did I say that how did I do that yeah. um yeah, but go to zoom.us and then that's where you, you know, would access. Um, so 
the thing, like I was saying, that's going to be a little bit tricky about our practice is that um, I won't be able to share this screen because I'm, I'm already like, I'm just on it, if that makes sense. Like my screen share options are for the other things that are on my computer, but not the actual Zoom itself. So we'll just kind of talk through. Um, I, the first thing that um, I wanted people to have an opportunity to practice is the simple task of muting and unmuting. So um, if I will, uh, I'll go around my screen and um, call you out. And if you wanna practice uh, unmuting and muting, and if uh, Al and Sharon, you're the first people that I have. I just unmuted. Yes, you did, good job. <laughs> good one. So I should probably say, just in case if anyone has any question about that, if you hover over your screen, your Zoom screen with your mouse cursor, then a taskbar, what's called a taskbar, will appear across the bottom of the Zoom screen. And on the bottom left-hand corner on my screen, and I think that's pretty universal, there's a little icon that looks like a microphone and it says mute or unmute underneath it. And that's the place where you click to mute and unmute yourself. All right, I know that you know how to do this, but give it a whirl. Okay, unmuted. Testing, good job. Um, Ms. Ruffin. Unmute it. You are, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can you remute? Good. Ms. Rothman. Hello. Hey, glad you're here today. Great, Ms. Salomon. Hello. Hello. Nice to see you. Um, then can you, if you can just remute, just to prove the point. Thank you, thank you. Um, uh, Ms. Beth Pardon. Got it, I think. You got it. Good job. How's your knee? Oh, poor, but coming along. Well, at least we'll, there's we'll that. We'll talk later. All right. Sounds good. Um, Ms. Schuster, can you unmute? Hello there. Hi. How's it going? Okay. And I'll good. Be unmute. Good. All right. Great. Ms. Janetta? Hello. Hello. Great. The next person on my screen, it just says Galaxy Tab A, mystery person. Can you unmute Galaxy Tab A? Perhaps they've stepped away. Um, all right, uh, and next to Galaxy Tab A, I have uh, Ms. Trifina Reynolds. Can you, hi. Now, if I'm remembering correctly, you had problems with your, um, with your sound that there wasn't, something wasn't attached. So maybe if you wanna type anything into the chat, I'd be happy to read it. No camera, no mic. I thought I remembered that. Okay. Well, we're glad you're here and you obviously have the skill of, of being able to mute and unmute. Thank you so much. Ms. Eileen Stark. I'm here. Welcome. Uh, Ms. O'Toole. Ms. 
Janice O'Toole, can you unmute? I'm trying. Wait. And you succeeded. Good job. Oh, I did? <laughs> oh, okay. You did it. Awesome. Good. Good. All right. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Riser, I know. And then Ms. O'Toole, if you could just remute. All right. Now, let's see what, how I do that. You'll just click right back on that same. There you go. You did it. Mr. Riser, I know that you just joined us um, as well as uh, uh, Mel and um, Miss Ernestine. Um, and I don't know if Gwen is there. Um, yep, here. Hey. Hello, hello. Hello. Um, I know you you all just joined us. We are um, just doing a simple practice on Zoom of, of some of the basic tasks. Our first one here, we're just making sure that everyone can uh, mute and unmute. Okay. So um, the next person, well, the next person on my screen is uh, Mr. Bob Reiser. So if you could just there. I'm muted. I'm unmuted. Good job. Good job. Good afternoon, everybody. Okay. Welcome. I and then if you could. Thank you. Um, and then Amel, if you could unmute. I know you know how. Okay. All right. All right. Good. I have to um, go to my next screen. Mine only shows uh, 16 people at a time. Uh, but uh, Ms. Ruth Freeman, can you unmute? So Ms. Freeman, I don't know if um, you have uh, a, a similar issue that maybe your camera or your mic isn't uh, functional. If you'd care to type anything in the chat um, or if you wanna indicate in the chat that you have some issue, uh, I'd be happy to try to help navigate with that. Just pause for a moment. Okay, well, you know, sometimes we step away from Zoom. <laughs> um, I seem to, we may have lost some people. Um, you were getting a, a, a chat from Ruth. Freeman. I do see it now. No mic. Okay. All right. Well, fair enough. It seems like I, I'm not sure. Maybe that looks like that Galaxy Tab A dropped out because I don't have two screens anymore. Thanks, um, Art, for pointing out that that chat was in there. Um, all right. So next task, we'll just practice uh, going off cam and coming back on or vice versa as the case may be. And I do understand that some people don't have a cam, so um, that's fine. But the that is operated, um, there's another icon directly next to that microphone that you tapped, that you clicked on to unmute. Um, and it looks like a little video camera directly next to the mic. So we'll just practice that one too. And share us, Sharon, if you want to start kick us off. Great, thank you. Um, Art. Great. Nice to see every the screensavers. I'm curious what everyone's screensavers will look like. Well, please come back at any time that you're ready. Uh, Ms. Ruffin. Great. And then Ms. Rothman, I also saw that you just did it too. Great. Ms. Salomon, can you go off cam? Okay, and, and then come back on. And um, Ms. Parnon, thank you, thank you. 
Ms. Schuster, you're the next person on my screen and there's um, a different, it says there's like a, a camera with a line through it. So I think that's indicating that you don't, you don't have a cam set up. That's correct. Okay, fair enough. Um, Ms. Janetta? A lovely butterfly there. <laughs> and then Mr. Riser. Do you see where the icon is for the, the video camera right next to the microphone? There you go. And then just click it again to come back on. Hello again, um, Mel. Great, thank you. Ms. Reynolds, I know you don't have the cam on. Um, Ms. Stark. Great. Um, and Ms. O'Toole. Good job. Now it looks like um, I'm seeing, the next one on my screen is Samsung SM. G920V, and it looks like that's you again, Mr. Riser. Is that maybe Mary's device? So um, Ms. Reynolds just wrote in, Zoom stated it is unable to detect a camera. And that is definitely something that people have run into over this time of Zoom. Um, if you have a little bit of an older device, um, they don't come, particularly desktops, they don't necessarily come with a camera installed. Um, you kind of started to see, I'm, I'm, I would be just, you know, shooting, stabbing in the dark to guess a year, but there was at some point when you started to see people would have an external camera sort of mounted on their computer, on the monitor or on the laptop, because uh, it didn't, that was the sort of, first step into having the video on the computer. And then, um, you know, it was seen, people, it just became a thing that was just built in to the device. So if you have a bit of an older uh, uh, device, you may not have that, that built in. So that's okay. You're still here with us. Who's Mary? that? Mary is an iPhone. Can she, can she, um, I'm, can she click on and off on the video there? I don't know. I'm not with her, so. Oh. Today I'm not. We're we're doing this separately. Uh, is she, I don't even know if she's tuned in. Is she? Well, it says I just see I see you on the screen, uh -huh. but yeah. it says Samsung. Right, I'm Samsung. Mary has an iPhone. So if you turn the sound down on the Samsung, that will alleviate the, um, the echo that we're experiencing right now. Because when you have two, when you're logged in from two devices from the same place, you right. get a lot of feedback. Can you, can you just mute one of them or, or the phone? So it's not actually the mute that makes the difference but it's literally turning the sound down, the volume down on the phone. Got it, okay, all right, did it, exactly. thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So that's a good tip. Uh, Al, you have a question? No, I just wanted to mention, I have an older com uh, computer and, and screen, and I have an add-on camera and microphone that I use, and it's, they're still available if, and it's a lot cheaper to do that than to buy a new, a new screen. Oh, well, well taken. Yes, indeed. You that is you can outfit uh, a, an older device still with an external cam and mic. 
So that is definitely an option for people. And just as you say, it's, it would be cheaper than buying a whole new thing. But I, I wanted to just uh, that keep in mind about that uh, little trick when we just turned the sound down. You, I've been in a couple different situations where I logged on on my phone and as well as another device to um, the same Zoom call for whatever reason. Um, or you may have be two people in a close area um, on the same Zoom and uh, turning that actual volume down will eliminate that feedback. Art, you had your hand up? Well, I was just gonna say, the, I, I have an add on mic and camera too, that's probably 15 years old that and we so used to, if you, it, well, we used to use it to do Skype. If you had okay. if your computer was a desktop computer, you couldn't do any, you couldn't really do Skype without one of these back yeah. then. And uh, it's made by Microsoft and I, I think it does a great job. I, it, uh, if there was more light, I'd look sharper. Well, you know, sharper. Right. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. Yeah, it's a viable option. It most certainly is as, as uh, these two can attest. Just gonna, I think the only person left, uh, I have Miss, Miss Freeman, and I'm not sure if you have a cam, if you want to indicate in the chat or if you want to click on or off. I'm kind of thinking that since you don't have a, um, a mic, that you don't have a cam. But ladies, please do uh, know, as uh, Al and Art have both pointed out, you can get an external cam and microphone for your for your computer if you are interested to do that. It'd uh, be cheaper than buying a whole new thing. Yeah, I, I actually, before I found this thing in a drawer, buried in a drawer, I, I looked them up on Amazon and um, they were in the low 20 low 20s up to a hundred dollars in that range so you can you know you can get them i don't think you need the most expensive one but you can get them maybe even in the teens they're, they're not a okay. lot cheaper than a new computer for sure yeah good to know my daughter bought me one uh gee just about six or seven months ago and installed it on my computer and it works well, you know. I like it. I don't know how much Great. she paid for it. I think she got it at, at one of the stores, you know, Best Buys or something. And and I, you know, um, Ms. Reynolds and uh, Ms. Freeman, uh, if you were interested to go in that route, I think that, you know, you could reach out by phone to us and we could set that up with the tech assistance um, to get it installed for you. So it, just please reach out to CPA if you, if you do decide to go that route and you need some support to get it set up on your, on your computer. Okay, so that to me is kind of like a, the real baseline, right, of, of being on Zoom. We wanna make sure that we know how to unmute ourselves and remute as well as turn our cam on and off. Um, there's been several incidences of social faux pas in our Zoom year of people not realizing that either their, their mic was on and they said something that maybe wasn't for everybody to hear or they left their cam on and they you know, showed some video of things that maybe weren't for everybody to see. So um, oh, Ms. Reynolds just indicated in the chat that she's plans to buy a new desktop. Good for you, probably. You know, outfitting it, depending on what your situation is, and if that's what you know you can you can do, is certainly an option. But I think that getting a newer device, it's just a more enjoyable experience to be online and to use the computer because the newer machines are just they're just more intuitive, and it, it's just a little more seamless. I think you'll be happy if you with when you upgrade, um, if you have interest to be going online. But sort of as I was saying, uh, uh, 
just be mindful when you go on Zoom, Zoom land that you um, are only showing what you would care for people to see. And um, just remember to mute yourself too. I have my um, in that settings, the dashboard uh, where I showed you, I have mine set up that my mic is automatically off anytime I enter a Zoom. So I don't ever, I have to unmute myself to say anything to begin with. And I just found that to be a little bit safer. So in case I was talking to myself or somebody walked in, <laughs> nobody heard anything they weren't supposed to hear. Um, okay, pressing on. I want to share um, one way that you can rename yourself for a session. Um, something else that's part of that conversation of limitations of Chromebooks. Um, Chromebook uh, does not, I, I'm trying to say this the right way. It doesn't play that nicely with Zoom and we're waiting for a newer app update to come out. It's supposed to be out by like June of this year, but um, that will give the full features of, um, Zoom, when it first came out, there was quite an issue. Like some of the older Chromebooks, even by a few years, just wouldn't even work with Zoom at all. So they're coming out with a proprietary app. Um, but so I know that if you have a newer version of Zoom, then you can rename directly from your square. But the way that I'm going to show you is um, another method that uh, because then on my version, from my, even though I have a brand new Chromebook, I don't have the option to rename from my square. So just know that not all the machines can do all the same things. But if you hover your cursor, again, if you sort of move your mouse or um, on your finger pad, hover your cursor and that taskbar comes up at the bottom of the screen, sort of in the middle of the, of the Zoom screen at the bottom, you'll see where it says participants. There's a little sort of middle grouping of icons and on the left of the middle grouping is the participants. And if you click on that, a panel will open on the right hand side of your Zoom screen that lists the name of all the people that are on this Zoom. If you go to your name, and if you had the chat box open, it will appear that half of that column will be the names of the people and the other half will be the chat. Um, so you might have to scroll down to see your name, but if you find your name in that column of names and then hover the cursor over it, you should come up with two options one that says mute and one that says rename. If you click on the rename box, you'll get a little dialog box that will pop up and you have an option to give yourself a new screen name. That's just for this session. Can everyone please rename themselves? Whatever you want to put in is fine. And if you need any help, good job, Ms. Reynolds. Thank you. Who went to sunshine? That's me, Eileen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Stark. Thank you. Enid's husband, Zorro. Zorro, formerly Karen. <laughs> JD, JDB, Joy, Happy. Nice work, Tina Turner. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Got a few holdouts. Good job, Ms. O'Toole. Smile. I love it. Transformer, Ms. Ruffin. Good job. So 
I see. Uh, so Mel and and Mr. Bob Reiser. Uh, how can I support you to get your name changed? Well, I put my. Uh, are we hovering over our name on the on my phone or on my laptop? It doesn't matter. Well, let's work from the laptop today because that's and then tomorrow it'll be the the mobile so we can look at that tomorrow oh, um, okay oh, okay so on the laptop put click on the participants i'm clicking the unmute button and it doesn't unmute hmm. <laughs> i i have the participants I'm hovering over my name and there's nothing coming up. How, I don't know what to say. Can, can you hear me now? I can hear you. Okay, okay I'm, I'm hovering over my name on the right. right on the list, list of participants, participants and nothing. When I hover over it with the yeah. uh, icon, mute, mm -hmm. or comes up. Mute or rename? Uh, mute and more. And more is rename. Okay. Click more. Okay. Yeah. I had that problem too. Okay. okay. I, I will uh, rename myself. myself. I apologize. You know, sometimes things just come, they just come up differently on different devices. So okay. I'm sorry. That there we go. Awesome. Big dog. All right. Good job. Okay, thank, thank you. Currently not in trouble. I like that. And then, um, Mel, do you guys want to try to change your name or? Maybe. They <laughs> Mr. Mr. Riser, if you could please mute the phone, because that's given some feedback. Hello, Rebecca. I'm back. Hi. Hey, Mel. Thank you, Mr. Riser. Do you want to try to rename? Do I want to try to rename? Yeah. Did you? I don't know if you had to step away for a moment or. We were practicing renaming ourselves for the session. You mean like on your name on the screen? That's right. Okay. So how do we do it? So if you go to the participants icon, that's uh, at the bottom of the uh, screen in the taskbar, and click on okay. that, um, the participant list should come up. Yep. And if you hover over your name, on the participant list, you should get some options. Oh, um, it should say it will say mute or rename or possibly more. And if you click more, yeah, I got it. Okay, so just rename yourself whatever you want to rename yourself. Oh, Great, thank you. No All right. Great. Um, I used to do that before, before I get on. Right. So that's just a way, maybe you're in a session that you don't know everybody and maybe you don't want your full name up there. Maybe it's a support group and you don't want to have your last name up there. Maybe you want to put something funny because you're with a group of friends like we all just did. Whatever. There's a million reasons, right? Why you might right. want to rename yourself for just one session. Maybe you want to just put your initials up like uh, Miss Janetta did. So uh, that's how you would go in and change that for that just one session, yeah, one session. to rename yourself. I want to try to, um, and then Mel, if you could just review it again, please. I thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, right next to that participants icon in that grouping along the bottom, there's a chat. Um, and if you click on that, if it wasn't already up, then the chat should appear on that side column. If it was up and you clicked it, it may have closed. 
But if you could open the chat, you'll see, um, so if you click it again from the icon at the bottom of the bar of the screen, it will take it away. But you could also, by going over to the column on the right hand side, there's a little sort of drop down arrow to the left of the word chat. And if you click on that, it will give you options to close the chat there or pop it out. And that would give you a superimposed dialog box with the chat. And you can do that same thing with the participant list. There's a little drop down arrow to the left of participants in the column on the right. And you can close the participant list there. Something you also may notice, oh, I see someone's put something in the chat. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Love it. Um, and if you did pop it out, you'll have to click on that little arrow to get it back into the side column. The air, there's a little sort of down arrow next to the X. But if you click on, if you have the chat or the participant list open and you click on the other one to open that, then you're gonna get that sort of split column where it's half participant, half chat. And you could close one or the other from those drop down arrows if you wanted to. Sometimes the chat when you're in a session can be very active and there'll be a lot of communication going on there. So um, you may wanna have a full column chat to be able to keep up with what's being written in there. So you may not want the participant list to be open the whole time. So that's navigating the chat. It's three o'clock. So I do, if anyone needs to go, I wanna please go about your business, but I would love to stay on and practice screen sharing with anyone who has interest in doing so. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, I want to do some screen sharing. I haven't done that. Okay, well, great. So, can this, you screen share if you're not a host? Yes, you can. Okay. Now, some people will have the setting that people can't screen share. That's very common, especially for like an organizational meeting or something like that. So that some random person can't just, you know, take over the screen. Right. But in a small group like this, I don't, we don't have that control on. So people have the opportunity. So along the bottom on the task bar, you have a little green box with an arrow pointing up inside of it. And it says share underneath. Um, when you click on that, you're going to get a dialog box on top of your Zoom, and it's going to show you the different browser tabs that you have open on your computer. The safest one that I find to navigate from is the upper left hand corner is going to select your whole computer screen as it stands if you were not currently on the Zoom. For example, I'll just do mine very quickly. So I clicked on the share button and I have the option for my desktop. So I'm selecting that. And then I'm clicking on that image, the picture of my desktop, and then I'm clicking share. And so now I can go to, there's my personal email. Here's my uh, AmeriCorps email. Here's Rebecca Cullors 71 email. I told you I have to check all these emails every day. <laughs> here's our slide presentation. And here's back to my Zoom account. So those are all the tabs that I currently have open on my browser. I'm gonna stop.